This is Mike Lindell. If you are unfamiliar, he is a nutter butter of epic proportions. He is in the middle of an interview with a guy named Gene Bailey right now. It's on a TV show called Flashpoint. It's on the Victory Network, Kenneth Copeland's network. And, of course, he's holding another election symposium. How many is this now? I don't know. This is August 17th and 18th, I believe, 2023, when this originally happened. Of course, it's long past that now. But he made a big announcement at this event. The announcement... He's come up with a device that he calls a WMD. This is not part one. If you haven't seen the other, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. But in the previous one, let's see if I can just step back here a little bit. Get a shot of him holding it up. Here, here. There you go. Okay, here's a shot of it right here. This is what I was looking for. He calls it a WMD. I, I forget what it stands for. Let me step back and see if he tells us. But yep. here... We can catch them in their lie. It's a wireless monitoring device. Wireless monitoring device. That's what it is. Let me explain real quick. Basically, the WMD, by the way, very funny, naming it the same acronym as Weapon of Mass Destruction. Anyways, it's a wireless monitoring device that apparently took him a year to design and build. I don't know what it would have taken a year to do this. This is like a super straightforward thing. It basically detects all wireless networks in the area within 300 feet of where you're standing, detects all wireless networks, and filters out the ones that are being transmitted by phones and cars and iPads and mobile devices, whatever, and finds only the ones that are being transmitted by routers. Now, that is possible to do, and it's really, really straightforward and simple. I tried to show how to do it, in a really straightforward way in the previous one, but it was just going to take too long to set up. It's super simple to do. It takes like 30 seconds if I didn't have to create a new subdomain and everything to show you. I don't know what took a year to build about this, first of all. And second, yeah, of course you're going to detect routers at voting centers. Do you know where voting centers are? Like where, where voting takes place? Usually at churches or schools or libraries sometimes. You think churches, schools, and libraries don't have uh, routers and internet? Of course they do. But he's using this to prove that the devices, the machines, are connected to the internet. They're not. They never were. And he thinks that this WMD device is going to prove that they're connected to the internet. It's just absurd, man. This WMD isn't going to prove anything. But uh, supposedly, I don't know how it works exactly. Supposedly, I think that when it detects a wireless network that's coming from a router, like an actual router or a stationary wireless network, I think it starts beeping like wild. So these, pe you know, these people are going to carry this into the voting center, and they're going to hear -na 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 -na, just loud siren going off because it detects the school's wireless network or whatever. I don't know what he thinks he's doing or accomplishing with this. It's just absurd, man. And it's going to cause chaos, of course. So anyways, that's where we are. He just unveiled this device, this WMD, this wireless monitoring device. And uh, I wanted to continue to listen to him justify it and explain it. Just embarrassing, dude. This guy is something else. All right, let's, let's listen from here. This is where we were. And... Uh, yeah, and we'll continue on. While we listen to this Mike Lindell thing, um, somebody asked me if I would beat the two super bosses in this game. It's Emerald Weapon and Ruby Weapon. And I saved before I fought each of them, and then I fought them just to see how it would go. So I'm going to go back down, and I'm going to fight them, and I'm going to explain my strategy while we watch Mike Lindell here. But yeah, it'll just be in the background if you don't understand any of that. A little bit of lead up to that. Um, I used a combination of potions and um, HP plus materia to get Cloud to roughly 7777 as his health, at his health bar. And then I got into a battle in this area, put the enemy to sleep, cast many on myself, which makes me do one damage. And then I struck myself for one damage until I got down to 7-7. Seven, seven. 
as the last two digits. And then I gave myself potions until I reached that. Because if you get quadruple sevens, it gives you a bonus, a special little thing where you do like 77 attacks for 7777 seven, seven damage or something like that. So I'm going to start off with that. And there's Emerald Weapon right there. So let's go into this puppy and do it, shall we? All right, let's listen to Lindell. Watch how I do this. I may lose the first time, but we'll give it a shot. I always said they're not online. They're not online. This yep. is the only device I know in the world that was developed. It took over a year that now will say, hey, you just if you just turn your phone on and I'm It'll sitting pop here, up. it would pop up, ding. It would say, here's the phone, here's the brand, here's everything. Now, if it was a computer, here's the address. If sure. it's a voting machine, here's a router, here's a polling book, here's a, a printer. You told us they weren't online. Now, think of this. Okay, look. There is a ton of stuff at the voting locations that are online. The voting machines themselves are the things that we claim are not online. And, and it's not even a claim. that Just like wireless functionality is not something that's built into these voting systems, to, into these voting machines. Can you believe this dude continues to this day to make these absurd claims? about voting like i he's in the middle of a lawsuit right now a billion dollar lawsuit something he cannot afford by the way a billion dollar lawsuit with dominion and the smartmatic one hasn't even happened yet that one's to come they're going to own everything that he has by the end of this honestly quick interjection i won't take long i just wanted to tell you guys youtube's algorithm operates off of a few factors watch time whether or not you subscribe and whether or not you like something so if you really want to help my channel i would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end if you don't watch it to the end just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise i would appreciate that very much all right let's get back to the video it's embarrassing this dude is an embarrassment i cannot believe that he's continuing to do this by the way in the background you can see i i did triple time and I'm just waiting for the 7777 attack to end. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm just going to ignore the attacks. I just did, I just cast haste on myself, basically. Big guard, which gives me barrier and haste. Going to ignore his attacks. And I just cast Knights of the Round. You need to have that materia. That's the hardest one to get. And I'm just going to mime, 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 mime. Everybody has mime on them, so I'm just going to keep miming until I kill Emerald Weapon, basically. And I'm going to keep it slow, and I'm going... I have it on weight, so I'm going to manage the the uh, speed bars very carefully. So Cloud and Yuffie are at zero. I'm going to mime, and the moment that they those bars fill up, I'm going to pull something else up so that I'm in weight territory because I don't want Emerald Weapon to have a single opportunity to get another attack in. That's how you beat him. Again, a super boss. Most people will never see this boss or be capable of defeating it in their lives, but now you get to see it. Anyway, let's keep listening. This, if you're a county clerk that we always go to and say, hey, we want to get rid of these machines, and they go, no, our, our, my machines aren't online. Well, That's correct. The machines are not online. She's heard, might have heard a lie behind a lie, a, a string of lies. Well, right now, that's an unacceptable excuse now because we're going to be able to go to them clerks and go, are you really going to uh, sit back? Because we're going to know either you're lying, misconstrued, or you're listening to a lie. Are you sure you want to keep them? Look, the best that this thing could do for anybody is tell them if there's like a wireless network nearby. I don't know what he's trying to accomplish with this stupid little device. And earlier in the previous one, he said, now you can sit back from your lazy boy chair at home and prove election lies or something. Uh, no, you would have to go to a voting center for this device to even work, first of all. And second, the existence of a wireless network does not prove like election malfeasance. You live in a fantasy land, Mike, okay? Come back to reality with the rest of us, please. And as you can see, I'm just going to keep miming until I kill Emerald Weapon. Sometimes I can't get that final hit in, and 
Emerald Weapon will take me out before I have the opportunity. But anyways, yeah, we'll see if it works. Sure. All right, Rick, what do you think of this new technology? I think it's ridiculous and sad. This isn't new technology. This is technology that's existed since, like, the dawn of time, okay? Since the beginning of the Internet, truthfully. This is, like, a fundamental piece of the Internet that's existed forever. It's super easy to do. This isn't new. And it also isn't going to prove that these machines, these voting machines, are online. It's just going to prove if there's a wireless network within 300 feet, which, by the way... Even if the church or the school or the library doesn't have a wireless network, you can bet your bottom dollar that the houses around them do. So this thing is absolutely going to go off. Of course it will. Well, it, it takes me back to Catherine Egelbrecht, you know, 15 years ago saying we're going to have to be the ones to clean up the voter rolls. The state's not going to do it. They're not going right. to do their job. So we, the people, are going to have right. to do it. And she- okay, I don't know who he's referencing, but no, the state should be the one to handle voter rolls. The government should be handling registration and stuff like that. She did that. And so now you got Mike doing the same thing. But with technology, we, the people, are getting in there and cleaning up the elections. And one thing about what Mike said earlier, I think he's. There it is. So I just defeated Emerald Weapon. Now you know how to do it. Um, And it gives you 50,000 AP. That's a crazy amount. I just, yeah. I just, most people never get to see that actually play out. Um. And once you beat Emerald Weapon, I'm going to zip forward so that you can see the results of it. I got an Earth Harp. Now you can go to the Calm Traveler, and you can get a little secret. Ooh, an Earth Harp. Want to trade it for some Master Materia? Trade. I already have all the Master Materia because I mastered everything. And <laughs> so anyways, yeah. I already ha- I have like six of these already. Anyways, um, next thing I need is a Desert Rose. So you've seen me defeat... Emerald Weapon. Now let's defeat Ruby Weapon. I saved before I defeated Ruby Weapon also because you have to have a certain configuration for this. Um, The configuration that I go with for Ruby Weapon is having final attack materia with a Phoenix equipped to Cloud so that if he dies, he will be revived automatically. Everybody will be revived. And you have to go into the battle with two of your guys dead and cast Phoenix on them. Because if you don't go in with two of your guys dead already, Ruby Weapon will destroy them. And so he won't stick his fingers into the ground until two people are dead. So I have to revive him as soon as I walk into the battle. Let's do it. All right, let's keep listening. This is Ruby Weapon. 100% 100% right. You know, in fact, I corrected Mike Garofalo this morning on Victory News when he said that... Wait, Mike Garofalo? Isn't it Garofalo? Mike Garofalo? Isn't that the name? I thought, I thought it was Mike Garofalo. Okay. Well, here's Ruby Weapon, by the by. Now that I... Since I have two guys dead, he's going to stick his hands in the ground. Like so. And I'm going to use... I could use... Yeah, you know what? Instead of life, too. I'm going to summon... Oh, yeah, and I have a ribbon on everybody. If you have a ribbon on everybody, then they're immune to status effects. I got a ribbon by morphing tonberries. That 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 can be kind of complicated. Yeah. I use Hades on him because he is susceptible to slow or stop, and Hades casts slow, I think, or stop. I'm not sure which. So I'm going to use Hades. And then I'm going to use Phoenix to revive all of my people. Actually, I'm not going to use Phoenix. I'm going to use Life 2. And now my strategy begins. Now my strategy is to use uh, my W Summon, Knight of the Round. I'm going to use Knight of the Round 1 and 2 because I have W Summon. And then I'm going to do Mime. And then I'm going to do Mime again. So that's six Knights of the Round that I just called. That's what I'm going to do. Um, when it comes back around to Cloud or Sid, they both have Hades material. I'm going to use Hades again as soon as Ruby Weapon is not, like, frozen anymore. Just keep using Hades and then Knights of the Round over and over and over again. That's how you beat this one. The Trump was going to have a lot of campaign events and a lot of hearings. And I said, no, no, no. When he goes to a hearing, when he gets <laughs> indicted, <laughs> that is a campaign event, event at this point. Yeah, yeah. Because- he's moving now. You can see that he's moving, so I need to summon... Hades on him immediately 
Uh, that that should be the very next thing that I do. I'm sorry, guys. I was just I just wanted to explain my strategy here. Since he's moving, I need to use Hades again. I have W summon, which means I'm not limited in how many times I can call Knights of the Round with Yuffie. So, oh God, he just used Ultima on me. Okay, let's just see how this goes. Cloud is now calling um, Knights of the Round on him, so we'll see. Hopefully I can get to uh, Sid using Hades. That would be fantastic to slow him again. Anyway, sorry, I'm just trying to outline my strategy. That's how you beat this boss, if you're curious. Up the elections, and one thing about what Mike said earlier, I think he's 100% right. You know, in fact, I corrected Mike Garofalo this morning on Victory News when he said that Trump was going to have a lot of campaign events and a lot of hearings. And I said, No, 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 when he goes to a hearing, when he gets indicted, <laughs> that a is a campaign event, event at this point <laughs> yeah, because he's going right. up in the polls every time. <laughs> that's it's right, time. that's right. Uh, that's Absolutely. good. And just show, I'm sorry, what I, I, I'm trying to understand here, what was that? And I said, No, no, no. When he goes to a hearing, when he gets indicted, <laughs> that is a campaign event at this point <laughs> yeah, because he's going right. up in the polls. Every now, Trump is not going up in the polls when he goes to a campaign, or I'm sorry, when he gets indicted. That's not happening. If you believe that's happening, you live in a fantasy land. Ooh, yeah. See, I just died, but that's okay. Cloud has, Cloud has the uh, final attack material. It will only work once, I believe, in this fight. So I need to use Hades immediately. Um, all right. I think Sid has Hades. Yep. So I'm going to use Hades. And then I'm going to use Knights of the Round again. Four different times. But again, I want to manage that weight, um, you know, that timer there. So I'm not actually going to select Knights of the Round until... I'm in the middle of like a, uh, you know, until I'm in the middle of a, an animation because it's going to be in wait mode anyways. And it gives me more time to basically pick the thing that I want. So anyway, sorry. Trump is not going up in the polls every time he gets indicted. They live in a fantasy land. I mean, he's not going up in the polls, period. He's staying roughly where he was or going down slightly. But these people are like looking at polls that are flattering to Donald Trump. Embarrassingly. It's just painful, dude. Let me show you something about polls. I've talked about this before, but okay, there's a website called 538.com. Ruby Weapon is still under, like has not come back. So I'm thinking I might use Mime. I can use mine without losing any time. Okay, I'm so this will give me an opportunity to use Knights of the Round two more times without lo losing a second. Anyways, so this is a an example right here, what you're looking at, of a presidential poll or of a, a polling aggregate, basically. You can see there are dots all over the place. This is how popular or unpopular Joe Biden is. The green is how popular he is. The purple is how unpopular, you know, disapprove or approve, basically. And if you look real closely, just going to zip up while Knights of the Round goes, you'll see the different dots all over the place. This is an aggregate. The idea at play here is if you're at a carnival, this is a mathematical concept. If you're at a carnival and you're standing around a bean counter, you know, you got a gigantic jar of beans. If you can guess how many beans there are within 100 beans or whatever in that jar, then they'll give you $50,000 or whatever, right? So here's the, ma the mathematical concept. You go around to everybody that's standing in the area and get their guesses and average those guesses out. The high guesses will, will counteract the low guesses, and you'll get pretty close to what the number actually is. Um, it's a, like a mathematical statistical thing. By the way, there you go. Just defeated Ruby Weapon. If you ever wondered how to do it, that's how you do it. Got 50,000 AP, 45,000 experience, and the Desert Rose. And now I already have a Gold Jacobo, but now I can take it to the Calm Traveler again and get a Gold Jacobo if I want it. And of course, if you're unfamiliar with the game or you've never made it this far, the Gold Jacobo can go anywhere. It can walk over any water or anything at all. So, yeah. Uh, and that's how you get Knights of the Round Materia. So talking to the Calm Traveler and in tr in trade for the Desert Rose, he will give me 
a Jacobo, a gold Jacobo. Now I get to name it. The other one is named Cement because that's what my wife suggested. Um, I'm not sure what to name this one. Oh, my stable is full. Heck. Well, anyway, that's how you do it, basically. Now you know. Uh, and now that I have shown you guys how to completely destroy all of the super bosses in this game and beat, like, literally everything, I have done everything. I've beaten everything. There's nothing more for me to do in this game, basically. We're going to switch to Pokemon. This is a ROM hack of fire red for the game boy advance it's called ultraviolet where i can catch every pokemon it, you know i'm not limited including the starters i'm not limited to like game specific pokemon in this one so anyway we're just kind of going through it as i was saying with the aggregate stuff here you can see that there are some polls that are really really high for disapproval and some that are really really low for approval but they don't represent the norm or the average uh, you want to take the average of this stuff. And you don't want to go with really poorly rated pollsters. You want to go with pollsters that get it right most of the time, right? Pollsters that are rated A, B, or C at, at worst. Because there are a lot of pollsters out there that have a lot of legitimacy on the right, but have no legitimacy outside of the right-wing extremist bubble. Like Rasmussen has no legitimacy in, you know the real world. It's only among the far right. So I don't know what poll these people, you know, uh, Rick Green is looking at. I don't know which pollster or whatever they're looking at, but Donald Trump is not going up in the polls as a result of his indictments. Hey, he's got the same microphone as me. Sure, SM7B. Interesting. He's not going up in the polls as a result of his indictments. And even if he were, fine. As long as he's not above the law, fine. I'm okay with him going up in the polls as long as he's held accountable for his actions for the first time in his life. Oh, yeah, in this game, I'm going to cheat. I love cheating. It's fun. It makes the game more enjoyable. Get used to me cheating in this game because it's going to happen a lot, okay? Anyway, let's keep listening to these nutter butters spread their nutter buttery all over everything. He goes to a hearing when he gets <laughs> indicted. That's that's a campaign campaign event at this point yeah, because he's going right. up in the polls every time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I don't know what polls they're looking at. Rasmussen, maybe. That, that, that's like one of the lowest rated polls ever or pollsters. Don't trust what these people are saying. Again, even if he were coming up in the polls, which I don't think he is, don't care. I want accountability. That's right. Uh, that's good. And just show you, uh, and you call these, what is, what is wireless, what, uh, wireless, WMDs, monitoring, wireless device. monitoring devices. So, WMD, wireless monitoring device, WMD. It's just painful. It's so stupid. It's like, could you be any more obvious, honestly, with the naming stuff? I don't know. I might have an appreciation for their, their naming methods if it was in a different context, but this is just painful, man. Come on. So you heard this in the news a while back. Yes, there really are WMDs, and Mike's got one. <laughs> and right. No, there really were not WMDs. There weren't. Okay, this is a call out to George W. Bush, aka W. That's what, how D U B Y A W. That's how you refer. That's how you refer to him. Anyways, George W. Bush in two thousand one, and all the way through two thousand eight. He lied his way into the Iraq war. He lied his way into it. He knew that there were not WMDs in Iraq. George W. Bush did. He, he couldn't have not known that. He was a president. He had intel. He knew all about this stuff. You cannot convince me he didn't know that there were not WMD, weapons of mass destruction, like nukes. Uh, under Saddam Hussein's control in Iraq. Complete nonsense. But Colin Powell, among other people uh, in the Bush administration, went to the UN and, and they went up there with a little prop. I think Colin Powell, I believe he's the Secretary of State maybe, I don't remember, brought up a vial of yellow cake uranium that the United States produced. And he said, this is yellow cake uranium. This is what Iraq is producing. Thus 
implying that they found it in Iraq, when in fact they did not. They, they didn't even say outright that they found it in Iraq. And if asked, they would say, no, we, I mean, we made this. They lied their way into that war. There were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. They were never found. Saddam Hussein, as terrible a person as he was, did not have nukes and was not trying to produce them. And the entire thing was made up. But the United States government, I don't remember what which department, was it the State Department or some, some department basically said with low probability or with low confidence, we believe that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq with low confidence. That was their assessment. Um, when they come out with these claims or these beliefs or ideas or whatever, they give you a confidence level. High confidence, low confidence, medium confidence, whatever. The State Department or whoever said that they believed with low confidence that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But that's all the public needed to hear after being propagandized to for six months straight about this or longer. Oh, they do have weapons of mass destruction, huh? Okay, that's all we needed to know. I don't care what the confidence level is. So George Bush lied his way into that war. And of course, Republicans like this guy right here, like Gene Bailey, believed it. He bought it. Anybody surprised by that one? So you heard this in the news a while back. Yes, there really are WMDs in Mike. No, no, there were not WMDs. I can't believe he'd even bring that up. It's like it's a stain on American history. We're going to look back at that time, the Iraq War as one of the most disgusting, grotesque human rights abuses we've ever committed as a country. Do you have any idea how many civilians have died in Ukraine as a result of what Russia has done so far? We're guessing somewhere around 10,000, give or take. Uh, we have verified a total of 9,444 civilian deaths during Russia's invasion of Ukraine as of August 13th, 2023. Do you know how many Iraqis civilians died as a result of America's invasion? Low estimates are 500,000 because the U.S. just went in and started bombing the shit out of the, uh, the place. Like, nobody cared. You know, it's a Middle Eastern country. It's a shithole anyways, as Trump would say. We're just going to go through and bomb the place. It's really not. You ever seen Iraq? Everybody thinks that it's ju it's like pyramids or, or it's just like run down or whatever. It's not like that. They actually have buildings and cities. Here you go. This is one of the cities in Iraq right here. And the United States just went through bombing it, dropping bombs on civilian centers. That was George W. Bush, by the way. Thank you for that one, George. He's a war criminal. He needs to be brought to The Hague. I, I don't give a shit about not prosecuting former presidents at this point. If you commit war crimes, or any crime at all, while in office, I don't give a shit. Charge him with a crime. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting off on a tangent here. We're here to talk about these nutcases right here who apparently believed the lie that there were WMDs. It doesn't surprise me at all that they believed that. So, so you heard this in the news a while back. Yes, there really are WMDs in my... No. Mike's got one. Right. And, right. Uh, <laughs> so, I want to say one... They're laughing at this, dude. 500,000 people died who were unaffiliated with the word. Just civilians. People walking around doing their thing and living their lives died lost their lives because of what Amer because of what George W Bush did and they're laughing oh that's hilarious oh my god yes we found wmds one more thing yep. you guys it's not just this if you get the frank social app go get the frank so oh my god he, now he's shouting out his app social app and that app you go click on elections now you get a live stream of election crime you can beam it down to your own state your own county because and gene how would all this reporting you got this you can look at election crime on a county level 
Now, he, interestingly, he actually made this claim a while back, too. Hang on. I remember this. I'm like an elephant. I got this stuff sitting up here, ready to, it locked and loaded, ready to go. I remember this. Hang on. Let me find it. Oh, here, 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 right here. And I'm telling everyone out there. Yep. This is the one, I believe. Yeah, I believe. So this was from um, November, early November 2022. He made a pretty extraordinary claim that it sounds like he's bringing back. And I'm telling everyone out there, we are watching from every angle. We are, there's people in every state, every county, every precinct, Brandon. Remember, you, they might think you can't look and see what's going inside that black box. But we can now in real time through something called the Edison Report. Every Okay, so if you so he's claiming we can look inside voting machines and see voter fraud or election fraud in real time in the moment through something called the Edison Report. So what is the Edison Report? I hear you asking. It's exit polling, basically. I looked this up. It's pretty much just a company that sits outside voting places and asks candidates. Who'd you vote for? They don't all have to answer. Some can, some don't want to. They're, you know, afraid of whatever. They just don't feel like stopping. So by no means is it an accurate metric that should be trusted or, or reliable or, or whatever. So exit polling is being compared to real vote totals. And if they're different, then that means that there was voter fraud in Mike Lindell's mind. That's the Edison report. By the way, here's what makes this game different from Fire Red. This is Ultraviolet. I can pick up both fossils if I want. Um, I can get every Pokemon. That's 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 the difference here. Anyway, let's keep listening here. We have cyber guys watching this. We I looked at a thing today. It was on my, my Twitter back from November of 2020. And they showed CNN 20,000 votes dropping right off of Donald Trump's total in real time. Okay, uh, God, I don't know what he's talking about here. I do know that there was a period of time where there was an error on the front end of a place called Decision Desk HQ, which is like an API that a lot of um, vote counting like websites and you know CNN and people like that use because they keep track of this stuff in real time, but. There was no problem with counting the votes. It was simply how the votes were displayed. Somebody accidentally added an extra zero when they were typing it in after getting the uh, the actual number. The database of how many votes there were was not altered. There was no mistake on that. This guy just lives in a fantasy land. You guys... Votes don't go in reverse. These are computer manipulation algorithms. They do go in reverse when there was a mistake typed in to the front end API. So what I'm telling you is this selection, it's all eyes. We have all the camera angles. Now, why, now everyone would say, well, Mike, why are you telling the bad guys right now? God, he's just he's such a ridiculous human being, isn't he? Well, I'm telling them, Brandon, because the way I look at it, we're gonna, it's going to be a win-win because the ones where we can override the algorithms are going to be there. They're going to win. And then also the ones they don't, all of it, you were, we got it all under camera. Well, maybe this time around the judges and the, the, left, the left media and maybe even the right media, Fox News and Newsmax, will actually report if there's machines that are involved in this election to steal another election. No, oh, I mean, Fox did make that false claim, and that's what got Fox News sued for a billion dollars and settled for $750 million with Dominion. And the Smartmatic voting um, case hasn't even started yet. So anyway, the point is, Mike Lindell is... Unglued from reality has been for a very, very long time. We're just watching it unfold even more. Reporting and machines right. go online and all this other kinds of reporting that would come through. There's other kinds of crime, too, right? Sure. And it, but it's only a good. I used to have a, a website, you know, put up crime dot whatever uh, dot com. Everybody turn in. If take pictures and turn in crime. The problem is, if you have the public do that, you have bad actors putting oh, up. Oh, yeah. Stuff. That's right. OK. Uh, or you have. 
people pretending that they saw something that's not real. There was no election crime. That's the, the deal here, Mike. There was, there was no, like, election malfeasance. And you know what? Actually, there was some election meddling, like, uh, you know, a little bit here and there on a local level. There were some people who decided to cheat and vote for their wife or vote twice or whatever else. Do you know that this happened more often than not on the Republican side? the real-time crime desk, blah, 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 whatever, people turning in election crime. There is no election crime. I mean, there are a few bad actors on a low level who are doing some things, voting twice or whatever, and they're caught, and that's it. There's no systemic fraud taking place on a systemic level that would have changed the outcome of the election. If you think that, you live in a fantasy land at this point, okay? So Mike is looking for systemic fraud. There was no systemic fraud. There were a few people that did something questionable. That's it. Bad actors putting oh, up big yeah. stuff. That's but right. I happen to have 300,000 people on the ground called the Cause of America. We've been around two and a half years in every state from Hawaii to wow. Alaska. They're the ones, my trusted people I talk to yeah. every Monday night, they're the ones that are out there taking pictures. They put it up and it goes right in that crime stream That's on awesome. Frank's, Frank's. Great. You know what? I'm, I'm assuming most of these people that he's got out here are probably bad actors that are looking for an opportunity to frame somebody as doing something that they weren't really doing, like Ruby Freeman um, a while back and her mom. Th they didn't do anything wrong. The mother passed a ginger mint to the daughter, and Trump claimed that it was a USB stick they, they were passing around. I'm not going to show the video because those two women have been through enough at this point, but that's just one example of a perfectly innocent interaction being turned into some big thing, some big election crime or whatever. It was never some big election crime. Mike always lived in a fantasy land, and so did Trump, of their own making in, in a lot of ways. Aside from the fact that you've got bad actors out there among Mike's little group of, you know, nutcases that are going around taking pictures of stuff, if they really are trying to stop election crime and are, and are honest... Fine. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm good with that. Take pictures of election crimes if you want, but you better be taking them for Republicans, too. You think they're going to be taking them for Republicans? Or they're just going to turn, turn around real quick, not pay any attention when those events take place, right? Social. Frank Social. Com. Sorry. And so then, go so get imagine you're on the night of the election. Here's what we need the public to do. Sit back in your easy chair. And turn on franksocial.com and put watch your crime stream. It'd be like, go, but we watch your crime stream. We got one. We got one. But you go, whoa, it's right in my county. Wait a minute. There's more. And, and now yeah. what do they do to the public? They need to spread the word about that. All go right. to your neighbor. Did you see what happened right in our neighborhood? Or right, sure. You know, yeah. So it's gonna Dude, this is just embarrassing and sad. He talked about his WMD earlier, wireless monitoring device. I was a software engineer for six years. That's how I supported myself and my kid for a long, long time. Based on what I know, it's going to send off an alert no matter what. In every precinct, every time, everywhere. If it's actually going... like, I, From my understanding, the thing is designed, if it's even real, may not even be real, it sounds like it's designed to detect hardwired networks like uh, routers basically that have Wi-Fi that send out a Wi-Fi signal and it filters out phone Wi-Fi and car Wi-Fi and iPad and whatever other mobile Wi-Fi devices it filters that stuff out well of course it's going to detect you know a wireless network at the school where the voting is taking place schools have wireless networks of course it's going to detect a wireless network from the house next door or the church, or whatever. Yeah, these places have wireless networks. Yeah. And so they're literally going to see, like, however many of these he sells. Say he sells, like, 300,000. They're literally going to see 300,000 events of election fraud, quote-unquote. When in reality, they it's just, like, fantasy. Like, they just live in a different world than us. 
Look at my money. Six, 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 six. That's awesome. They're just living in a fantasy land right now. It's embarrassing. Well, let's keep listening here. Heard about that. Go right. to your neighbor. Did you see what happened right in our neighborhood? Or right, sure. You know, yeah. so it's going to be like neighborhood policing. Yeah, and shining the light in the darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. The, it will be a great. All right, Rick, I hear you've got a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, just, just one quick thing, because, you know, as Pat Kolbeck is up there talking right now, the difference with what Mike's talking about doing here, when Pat Kolbeck called me on election night at 3 o'clock in the morning, he had discovered the Ethernet cables coming out of the out of the uh, election boxes and everything. But okay, no, none of that happened. They, nobody discovered Ethernet cables coming out of election boxes. It's nonsense. You know why? They're not connected to the Internet. And if they, if Rick Green believes that there were Ethernet cables connected to the boxes, guess what? There's no Wi-Fi to detect. It, it completely invalidates the need for this wireless monitoring device. Either it's wired or it's wireless. You can't detect it if it's wired like that. It's detectable, but not, not with something like this. These people just live in a fantasy land and can't even get their own stories straight. Pro tip, if you want to protect your Wi-Fi from interceptors, call it something like FBI Surveillance Unit. Yeah, I had my Wi-Fi network named FBI Surveillance Van 5 for a while. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> As if the FBI would name their Wi-Fi network FBI Surveillance Van 5. Just, <laughs> anyway... Uh, you can name whatever, anything. I also had my Wi-Fi named Bill Y the Science Fi for a while there. Um, I ended up changing it eventually but to uh, the, the surveillance van thing. I'm actually thinking I might buy one of Mike Lindell's little things, like one of his little WMDs or whatever. That'd be interesting. He's describing what's called war driving. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Thank you for pointing that out. He's describing what's called war driving. War driving has been around since the, the early days of the Internet. It's roaming around trying to identify unprotected Wi-Fi access points. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Matter of fact, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, Kevin Mitnick was a famous hacker in the 90s or 80s or 90s. He's one of the early hackers, right? He went to jail for like a long, long time because he went like all the way to the top he like anyway based from my understanding this may be just myth so take it with a grain of salt this may not have even happened i don't and it may not have been kevin mitnick so like i said don't you look this up before believing me but there's a story that could very well be myth about kevin mitnick driving up to a bank with a laptop sitting in the parking lot and connecting to their network or whatever, just connecting to their internet, creating an account for himself, depositing $10,000, walking into the bank, withdrawing that $10,000, and then putting the duffel bag on the uh, counter and, and tell them, this is fake, I hacked you guys to get this, and I want to secure your network. Again, that could just be lore that I heard when I was younger, but uh, there was a lot of that type of thing. Yeah, war driving, that's a good point. So Mike is doing war driving, except he's using a device to do it, and it's, it's not detecting unsecured wireless devices in this case, I suppose. It's just detecting any wireless device or network that is not sent or created by a device, by like a phone or something. Isn't this how some companies apple recruit their security personnel daring them to hack in um i apple and others have done that but i'll tell you what i i actually had an interview with google and i'll tell you how they recruited me i applied at their company and i said i don't have like a, a degree in this or anything is that okay and they said oh we don't care about the degree what we care about is that you know what you're doing so they set up a uh, an interview. They liked what I had to say. They set up a second interview. And in the second interview, it was with a technician, like so, like a, a software engineer. The software engineer asked me to write a an algorithm that was better than N log N. I'm sorry, no. 
N squared is what I meant to say. N squared is the slowest one. It's called bubble sort. Now, if you know anything about algorithms, basically what that means is uh, there are different speeds or, or different efficiencies. That's the right word. Different efficiencies at which algorithms work, right? So you want to sort this set of numbers. You got uh, 1 to 100, and they're completely random in this data set. And you want to sort them. One, two, three, four, five, six, sequentially, right? So n log n, I'm sorry, no, n squared is what I meant to say. n squared is the slowest one. It's called bubble sort. And you basically take the first one, you know, the first item in the data set, and you compare it to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one, and you put it in line where it belongs. And you start at the beginning and you go all the way through. Start at the beginning all the way through. It's called uh, bubble sort. It's very, very slow. And it's n squared is what it's called. Um, they were really looking for n log n, which is something like merge sort or quick sort or heap sort. I mean, there are a number of different sorting techniques that are faster than n log, or I'm sorry, that are faster than bubble sort, which is n squared. Um, unfortunately, I had not actually read the algorithms book yet. I eventually did read the algorithms book. But after I read the algorithms book, if, if I had, I would have written like quick sort for him or something. I wrote bubble sort for him. So that's why I didn't get hired at Google. Anyway, just a little fun fact about how algorithms and stuff work. Sorting numbers is one of the great challenges in software engineering. You would be surprised. Sorting algorithms is like one of the big things that everybody wants to understand and do quicker and quicker and quicker because it has a surprisingly high amount uh, or it has a surprisingly big effect on a lot of stuff. When I say n log n, they call it that quick sort, heap sort, merge sort. They call it n log n because the more numbers you have, you, you know, you start out up here with efficiency, the more numbers you have. It's on a logarithm, so it, it goes downward in length of time it takes. So logarithmically faster and faster and faster. Uh, that's what n log n is. n squared means it's on an upward trajectory, a linear trajectory. The more numbers you have, you can calculate exactly linearly how long it's going to take to calculate. Kind of confused about your explanation for powers. My understanding is they're exponential. Example, two, four, eight. Oh, you know what? I said n squared. You're, you're absolutely right. I was saying it was linear. I meant exponential. You're absolutely right. It, it takes exponentially long time. Uh, you're right. That's my mistake. I just wasn't thinking when I said linear. n squared is the longest or the, the least efficient. It's not about amount of time that it takes. It's about efficiency. Sorting algorithms are. And n squared is on an exponential curve upward. So the larger the data set, so you've got a thousand things to sort, 10,000 is going to take exponentially longer to sort than 1,000, for example. But n log n is the best because the more things you're sorting, the less time it takes, basically. Thanks for pointing that out. I apologize. So anyway, just trying to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how all this stuff works. Sorry about the, uh, you know, the, the deviation or whatever. What language did they ask you to write the code in? Any language. Google told me I could use any language I want. I chose Java. Unfortunately, I forgot how to append strings in Java during the test. <laughs> uh, the answer on how to append strings is to put a plus sign between the strings. I was used to using C where you had to use like strcat function or something like a string cat function, which is more complicated. Um, anyway, <laughs> whatever. You know, I didn't get that job, but I eventually got a better job, in my opinion. Exponential? Yes. Uh, logarithms are exponents in reverse. So exponents go up at a curve like this. Logarithms go at a curve like this. Tell me about it. Doing a comp sci degree. Every class, they want us to use a different language. Yep, that's important. It's important you use a different language. Okay? Uh, that's what the whole job is. 
you basically walk into a brand new situation with no knowledge of a an API or the language that you're working in, and they give you shitty documentation, which sometimes I I've experienced this is in like a Chinese language. Really, it's written in Chinese. Okay, the documentation is in Chinese. And it's a hashing algorithm that I'm trying to decode here. You got to walk into these situations sometimes and understand. So it's good they're preparing you for that by making you use a different language every time. That's valuable, in my opinion. It's a very challenging job, but it can be very rewarding too. Just be prepared to have challenges presented in front of you and be prepared to work for, work through them no matter what. And don't be afraid to ask other people, your coworkers or whoever, for help. Your coworkers are your resource. They will they will help get you through all of it. And Stack Overflow. Those are going to be your your top weapons in the war against bad code, <laughs> if you will. Anyway, all right, let's keep listening. He had discovered the Ethernet cables coming out of the out of the uh, election boxes and everything. Just absurd. Thing, but he had no way to prove it. What Mike's right. offering right here. But he had no way to prove it? What about a camera? What about anything at all? Literally anything. I will take any evidence whatsoever. Any. He had no way to prove it, he says. Here, if we end up in that situation again, no longer does Pat have to try to explain what he's... No, the WMD isn't going to do anything for anybody if it's got an ethernet port connected to it because it's a wireless monitoring device wireless if there's a wire it won't be able to detect it my god these people seriously they are i'm sorry guys look i don't like insulting people i don't do it that's not who i am i'm not the guy that's always bagging on people but these people are one of two things lying through their teeth or dumb as dog shit, one or the other. Yeah. Right. Without, we'll the, see it. without the technology and the evidence, he's going to have it. That's, that's, that's right. amazing. All that's right. exactly right. All right, so let me... No, it's not exactly right. It's stupid as shit. I'm sorry. 